Okay, so let's talk about joints. Um, real quick, I'm just going to throw it together. It's going to be terrible. Don't judge it. Like a general arm. Tight sleeves. I'm going to clean this up as we go, too, to help kind of show you. This is really bad, I'm sorry. But general idea is there. Okay, so we've got basically uh, a couple different segments. We've got the forearm, the upper arm, the forearm, the palm, <coughs> the thumb, and then the fingers, right? Make this less shitty. Bear with me for two seconds. Make sure we're working in RGB. Good. Torso. Let's pretend that's a torso. The definition.
doing a little bit more. Okay, so not gonna win any Oscars, but we kind of get the concept, right? It's a hand. So when we're talking about joints, I literally just mean a circle, right? So to join these together, we're gonna get our circle tool and make a circle, and then just place it on. We want it to line up exactly so it forms like a half circle extruding out of the end of the nub. Is that the best word? Nub? Limb, I guess. And then I'm going to just go ahead and add a point and delete a point to open up that line work. So now if we move this, we've got kind of that cutoff, right? I can go into my wireframe mode and line that up exactly to the end. Command Y. can go down here and kind of fix our, our line work. So now we have that. But I clearly don't want this to be showing, right? So I can just send it to the back. Then I'm going to hide my guides. Let me fix this a little bit more so it kind of jumps out a little bit. Some more straight on approach. Good enough. And then I'm going to take this circle and copy it, duplicate it, and do the same thing over here. It's pretty close. center is Get it pretty roughly accurate and feel free to ask questions if I'm not explaining something well while I'm doing this which means we're gonna have to move this back a little this. So now if I overlay these, we have a new issue, which is oops, turn off the guides, that our circle is going to show up, right? And we don't want that. So 
So one thing we can do to combat that is we can move this to the bottom layer. And then we can actually wait, I like I move that to the top layer. And then we can go in like here and here, and then delete this point. Right, because arms naturally have some crease in them. So that way when this rotates, you'll see some natural creasing with it, which actually helps the effect we're going for. Okay, so that one's done. And now we need to do the same thing with the palm. This is really phallic looking. That. Let's make a new circle. It's about that big. Pretty close. Let's chop off that extra. Oops. Whoa. annoying. Boom. Okay, and then do the same thing for the palm. The palm is going to kind of create like a heart shape, so it doesn't have to be necessarily as top and bottom. Sweet. So now we have these shapes. Like that. And that can just sit on top of the other circle. Get that lined up perfectly. Let's 
pretty close. And we'll come back to the circles. Okay, thumbs. Same thing. I'm just gonna do one of these. Those. Sweet. Let me that. And this guy. It's a little bigger. And we just want to run it through that center point is the most important part. Copied, pasted it in place, and I'm going to send that to the back. Take the top copy, the thumb, merge it. Do a little bit of cleanup here. Sweet, thumb. We've got this, so we're gonna have to delete that. Yeah, there's a lot more cleanup we could do, but maybe we'll add like thumbnail. a huge 
later. Okay, you get the idea. It's not super pretty, but it'll do. Um, yeah, those fingers kind of suck. Uh, I don't think it will. Because you know you're gonna have shapes like this, we might have to go back and tweak it. Like if this wasn't a demo, I would make them a perfect circle. But I'm gonna go fast for you guys, and then I'm not gonna hide this because I think you guys kind of get the concept of how to do this, right? Let's tweak all that. Okay, then we go into our layers. Let's make a bunch. Okay, then we're going to take the forearm, or the upper arm, group it, and paste that into upper arm. So you can command X, go to upper arm, command shift V, move it to the top. Lower, index upper. Pink. 
Sticky Upper. Okay. That looks pretty good. And then everything that's left is torso, which is nice. Okay, let's save it. and go into After Effects. So I'll import it. And I want to import it as Composition Retain Layer Sizes. Uh, if you do the other one, it'll just take the artboard size and import that, which we don't want. And it'll make a pre-comp for us, which is nice. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and make a, make a background layer so we're not staring at black. Like that. Drop that to the bottom. We can shy it so we don't have to look at it. Okay, so now we've got all these parts in here, right? And we need to start anchor or moving the anchor points. So if we hit Y on the keyboard, we can move around this anchor point. And the anchor point is just where an object uh, references its center. So uh, if we rotate it where it naturally is in the middle, the arm rotates like this, right? But if we move this anchor point, over here, the arm rotates like that. And that's pretty good. And what I'm going to do real fast is I'm going to go back to my Illustrator file. I'm going to take this circle and paste it on top, make it smaller, and then make it red. That's not going to show, so I'm going to have to do it here. And if I save it, it'll update our Illustrator files, or our After Effects files, and those dots will come in, which kind of gives us a good guide of where to put those anchors in. So I hit Y on the keyboard, and I just drag it over. And you can get more technical with this and maybe do like, uh, like an X, or a circle with an X in it, stuff like that. But And uh, humans use what's called kinematic motion. Does anybody know what that means or heard that phrase before from physics 201 or something like that? Um, 
So normally robots, uh, when they move, they have direct control over their joints, right? So like hand goes up, it looks robotic, it's independent of everything else. But when a human moves, our shoulder moves our arm, or our upper arm, our upper arm moves our lower arm, and then our lower arm moves our hand. And it all kind of stems downwards and trickles down. Does that make sense? Opposed to a robot, which would, you know, everything else is based off of where the hand goes. And that's called kinematic motion. So when we're rigging, we want to take that into account. So our torso is going to be guiding everything. And then our upper arm is controlled by the torso, hence why that anchor point is there. The lower arm is controlled by the upper arm. The palm is going to be controlled by the lower arm. And then all the lower joints of the fingers controlled by the palm, and so on and so forth. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm just going to guess a little here. So there's one last thing we need to do, which is parenting. Um, again, it's that same concept. So this upper arm is controlled by the torso. So we parent. This is called a pick whip. A pick whip, excuse me. And you can just uh, drag it on top of other layers to parent. Otherwise, you can just click in this parent drop-down menu and click torso. The lower arm is going to be parented to the upper arm palm to the lower arm, pinky upper is going to be to pinky lower, pinky lower is going to be to palm, ring upper to ring lower, ring lower to palm, index upper to index lower. And how a parent works, do I need to explain parents or parenting? Do you guys remember that from type 2 at all? Yeah, explain it. Don't explain it. Explain it. Okay. Okay, so two objects, right? Right now, when I right now when I keyframe our circle, let's say I put in a position keyframe, and then I put in another one, and I move it to here. Right. So independently, it moves like this. And then let's say I want to rotate this guy, so I put in a rotation keyframe here and a rotation keyframe here. And I just increase it to like that. Oops, I did both. So now if we look down at rotation, see how it increases from keyframe to keyframe over time. And then position moves from position one to position two over time. And they're independent of each other, right? But if I take our circle, and I parent it to our square, Now watch what happens. Oop, I did that backwards. All 
our circle is going to rotate and take all the rotation keyframes into account from the square because the square is the parent. So if this were Illustrator, it would be like layering kind of. So you have a layer and then inside that layer is a group and then a group below it or something like that, right? Or a subgroup even. The subgroup is going to be affected by the parent group. Same concept. Does that kind of make sense? So it's rotating with that. And then if we did like a position keyframe here to the square, it would move with it too. But it's also doing its own independent actions. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? Okay, let's go back to our joints. So what that means for us is now when we move or rotate our upper arm, everything else moves with it, right? So we can put in a rotation keyframe, which is option R. And we can rotate it down to here. So let's scale that down. And then we can, and right now what it does is this, and it looks stiff. So we can go into our lower arm, option R, option R. Now we have this. We can get even more detailed. Go to the palm and put in keyframes. Right? starting to kind of look human. Let's go to the lower, and then a rotation keyframe. See how it's rotating around that center joint? And now it all moves. Okay, speed it up a little. Does that make sense? Any questions? Sorry, I'm really bad at tutorials sometimes. I need to like just record these in private and then send them, email them to you or something. But <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like switching between the mouth? Like, I don't. I still don't get what you mean. I Sure. Um, that's going to be tweening for the most part. Uh, it depends on your design. Uh, but there's, I think, a standard of six different mouth shapes or something like that. Um, you'll have like an O. Let's get rid of that fill. So it's going to be like an O1 and do like a tongue.
right? Uh, and then when you transition to something that's like This, uh, you can either you can do a couple different things. You can just cut it. You can put them on top of each other. And then maybe do like some tweens. is really bad but all right that's a little fast or slow but general concept so that's one way to do it uh, and then you can actually keyframe the individual one as well or the individual individual shape excuse me as well so like let's just drag this down here got this path content we need to change that over from an ellipse actually I think we did and if we keyframe that path Get something like this. Right, so there's different options. It depends what you're going for. You know, the one on the right needs to be sped up. This maybe needs to be like one, two frames in between. So, like that. Just different effects different fluidity, different tones, stuff like that. But yeah, that's uh, you're going to learn that's going to be a lot of the decision making you have to make is doing kind of the frame by frame look, which is on the right versus keyframing paths, which is on the left. But does that make sense? Does that answer your question? And then this would, of course, be parented to the head. The head would be parented to the neck, the neck to the torso. What other questions do you guys have? Mm -hmm. uh, so you'll need to draw both of those perspectives uh, and then bring them both into After Effects, layer them on top of each other and parent them to the same thing, but one will be hidden 
or not visible, uh, and the other one will be turned on, and then you'll switch. Like, mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, you can do, you know, you'll be able to get some movement before. There's going to be a point where there's a hard switch, you know? So you can move the fingers in and have them start to curl and then hard cut and kind of pick up that curl where the first one was and then kind of mold it from there. That's a good question. Any other questions? Yep, yep, same thing. Um, that's why we do those kind of those angles is so like if he's turning sideways we can use that 45 as his as his pivot mark and a lot of this is going to be kind of case-by-case basis so I'm gonna have to help you guys out individually because you all have super different projects but is this overwhelming do you guys feel overwhelmed yeah it's okay we'll figure it out and we'll get through it by the end of the semester, you guys are going to be pros, I promise. But so step one, um, let me stop this.